Moving on from that one, let's quickly talk about this one. This is regarding Tony Hinchcliffe. This random lady called, um, what's her name? Devo Royale has accused Tony Hinchcliffe of some very dicey, dicey things. And it's an interesting post, right? Because on her Instagram, she posted it. She posted it like this with a picture of her holding the statement that she typed up. Oh, is, are the comments gone? She deleted the comments. What? There's no comments. Or did she delete the post? I don't know. Anyway, um, she posted a picture of herself holding the statement. And then she actually posted the statement itself, if I'm not confused. Yeah. So this is a statement that this lady made regarding... Oh, her name is Devora or Vora. I don't know if you... Do you pronounce the D? Or you don't? I'm not really sure. It's Vora Castan or Devora Castan, who is a former guest of Kill Tony. And she says the following. The title, it's, it looks like a Los Angeles Time article, doesn't it? So I'm not too sure if she sent this out to journalists or if this is just the way she writes, but she wrote the following. What you should know about Tony Hinchcliffe, he tried to rape me at a comedy store. When I saw that headline, I was a bit like, whoa, because the a rumor or the best kept secret amongst comedy fans and people who watch these type of things that I do or other streams or shows in general, the the common feeling is that Tony Hinchcliffe is gay. That's what everyone thinks, right? Everyone assumes or has a feeling that Tony Hinchcliffe is gay because of his mannerisms or how he speaks and shit, I don't know, or the way he sits or the way he ties his Air Force Ones. Or I think because um of that thing that rogan does right rogan always says this little story about he's got a friend who's gay and we all know it but he doesn't want to say it because he's scared or he doesn't want to admit it or something right and that, I, I, I always thought that was strange that thing that rogan always does because even if that person isn't tony i'd be a bit annoyed because it invites speculation he keeps he mentioned it from time to time oh, i've got a friend who is gay and it's like bro like leave them alone if they're not ready to come out they'll you know it is what it is like you don't need to keep mentioning it and you're super famous too. People are only naturally going to speculate who it might be. So I always find that odd. If you're that person that is gay and one of the biggest podcasts in the world is talking about it openly, it's just strange. Anyway, so people assume Tony Hinchcliffe was gay. So if it comes out a story that he raped someone, that's a bit of a curveball, isn't it? Um, if you do think he's gay. Um, it continues. The article says, um, on July 15, 2020, I escaped an attempted gang rape at the comedy store. In <laughs> Sorry to laugh, but it's just... Getting gang raped in the comedy store sounds like a fucking horror show, isn't it? Like, god damn. I went to a small event by myself and I was invited to sit at the table with Tony Hinchcliffe, who's the host of the show Kill Tony. The next thing I knew, I felt like I was drugged and I was surrounded by a group of men. It was terrifying. There wasn't anyone around to help me. I ran out right away and called the cops. So she was in this comedy store. She's drinking, having a laugh, talking about comedians. Ah, ha, ha. Do you hear? That guy's a beast. That guy's a beast. Oh, she's a killer. She's amazing. That guy's a killer. That guy's a beast. Right? That kind of conversation they already have. And then suddenly, she's getting a little bit loopy. She sees Ron Jeremy, and then she runs. Um, I went to a hospital for a few days to detox from I don't know what and to stay safe as I have no longer felt safe in my apartment. The show has left LA, but it's still up and running. What? The show has left LA, but it's still up. What's that? Is that a term? The show has left LA, but it's still up and running. So she left, went to hospital and got detox, but she doesn't know what from. Surely if you get detox, they tell you, no? The experience was so traumatic that I left LA and stopped doing comedy for three years. I don't, anyway. Um, what's that got to do with Tony, though, if you stopped doing, oh, because, oh, I guess because it's a traumatic experience, it made her not want to do stand-up comedy. I returned him, I reported him to LAPD. The police have not helped since the incident. I feel like if there's, okay, I guess there's a police report you could probably look up in that regard. That makes sense. Fair play. I feel like I stay silent on this, then I'm protecting a predator. There are also rumours of him preying on newer female comedians and former female regulars who were on this show. If you are reading this, you probably attended the show and support him. I hope you think otherwise after reading this. He's extremely manipulative and I'm sure he's intimidated many women into silence. There's not much information on this, to be fair. It seems damning, but there's not really much information when you kind of dig into what's actually gone on. I don't really know what the... You know, there was alleged gang rape that she, what, she ran out, went to hospital, got detox, doesn't know what from, reported to the police, but they, what, so you got, you was attempted gang rape in a very big comedy club establishment in LA, and they didn't want to follow through the police. Why wouldn't they want to follow through something like that? Especially when it's concerning big, high-profile people. Like, why wouldn't anyone want to follow through? And if it's actually legit, why didn't she go to, like, who's that journalist that exposed Brian Callan? She could have easily just gone to that person, I forgot her name, 
and I'm sure she would have probably taken the story or somebody would have taken her up on the story and spoke about it. Like, it seems strange that police wouldn't want to talk about it. And also she streams, she doesn't know the details of what... Or maybe she's trying to say she got spiked. That's what probably she's trying to say. Maybe she got these at hospital and maybe if you get... I don't know. Maybe if you get spiked, maybe not all the times they can find out what the spike was when they do the fucking, um, you know, whatever, the test and shit. Maybe they couldn't find out what the exact thing was, maybe. But it seems a bit dicey, isn't it? It seems a little bit dicey. I'm not too sure there what's going on. And she's got a picture of her standing outside the police of the police station, smiling. I don't know. Printing the statement off and sending it to people. I don't know what that does. Maybe it's evidence that you did it, the statement, and then the thing. And then there's no comments now. Why there's no comments on the post when it says there's comments on there? Yeah, that's how she deleted the comments or she turned off her comments. Maybe she didn't like the response. So that's a bit strange, to be fair. I don't know what that's about. Maybe she wasn't getting a good response from people. But I find the response interesting. But let's see how it goes. Because like I said, the, you know, everyone thought Tony Hinchcliffe was gay. So if it turns around that he's actually not, and this is how people find out that he raped somebody, <laughs> that would be fucking crazy, right? Everyone thinks you're gay, but then they find out you're not because you allegedly might rape somebody. Okay, yeah, she turned off her comments on everything, it looks like. She turned off her comments on the last three posts. Yeah. Her comments have been turned off. So I guess she was getting she was getting fucking attacked, I think, right? She must have been getting absolute weapons thrown at her, I'm assuming. Which is why she probably turned off her comments. Um but yeah, man. Um thoughts and feelings with her, if this is the case. Um former kill turning host guess or something i'm sure that's not enjoyable to suffer what she's allegedly been suffering from and hopefully they get to the bottom of it but i don't know what to i don't know how to read that one it seems there's a bit of there's a few holes in that story but hey let's see what happens when it kind of gets put out in the light someone will address it maybe they won't who knows um who fucking the show is in austin singer okay cool Oh, no, I know the show's in Austin, but she's talking about a, a situation that happened in, in, in the comedy store in LA. That's what she says, no? Or did I read that wrong? Oh, she put she put another post up. Oh, look, she put another post up. Just fresh off the off, fresh off the fucking thing. She put another post up. Fresh off the press. I think it's explaining her comments turned off. Just a reminder, I was a comedian in SF and LA and SD. What's SD? Is that San Diego? For about three years from 2017 to 2020. I have gotten up on stage a few times recently. I was never a big deal, but I got booked in every city I went to. I've been a stage on stage at the LA Comedy Store on Potluck twice and Kill Tony twice. The LA La Jolla Comedy Strip multiple times. The Madhouse in San Diego, Flappers in Comedy Club Burbank and the Ice House in Pasadena. Tommy T's in, Ples in Pleasant... What's that called? Pleasanton. Pleasanton? Pleasanton. 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 Pleasanton and many other stages and, and bar shows. I've also gone up at the American Comedy Club open mic in San Diego. What's this? What? I'm a comedian. I don't need clout. I don't need his name on my page. I have blocked Tony for harassing me and trying to make me take my post down. Oh. Okay, so she's bit. So I guess the commenters or the people that were giving a pushback on those comments were saying she was doing it for clout. So she's basically saying... She's basically saying that she doesn't need clout. She's got a ton of credits or a ton of appearances in places, right? She's gone up in all these illustrious comedy clubs like the Madhouse, Flappers, Ice House, Tommy T's, um, and the American Comedy Club in San Diego. I thought she went to the same college that fucking BGL went to. Was that the American Comedy? What was that? The University of Comedy or something? What is? What did he go to? It was some fucking funny name, a college in like San Francisco or something, something like the the American College of Humor or something. I was like, fucking hell, mate. Um, I'm a comedian. I don't need clout. Okay, cool. So she's basically fighting back against her claims that she's on it for the clout, clarifying why she's turning off the comments and saying, hey, I did this on my own. I didn't need their help. I was getting up in good places and stuff. So it, it sounds like she's doubling down on her accusations. And she's also suggesting down here that tony hinchcliffe has got in touch and told her to take that shit down you're ruining my rep everyone thinks i'm gay and here you are telling them i'm straight <laughs> i don't know what's going on there but it seems like a fucking horror show um i'm starting to believe now more likely than not even if this isn't true of the whatever that my overall thought is that i'm starting to believe that there's probably more 
abusers and more fucking diddlers in comedy than there's not. If you do meet somebody that's decent, that's why people make such a big deal out of someone in comedy who's a good guy, quote unquote, because they don't exist. <laughs> I bet you that's why everybody has their skeletons. That's why also they don't want to speak about other people when they get caught out, counseled or whatnot, because they know that, you know, they have done the same, if not worse. That's basically the name of the game. So if you are a woman in the industry, to escape unscathed is almost a miracle. You almost have to... That's probably why those Elijah Schlesinger types have such a... Have so many, like, you know, Brendan Shaw Pringles on their shoulders. Why they're so kind of, you know, uh, quick to fucking snap back and shit. Because they've had to put up with some shit, you know, the Amy Schumers of the world um, in that regard. They've had to they've had to take it they've had to, you know, endure a lot of bullshit. That's probably why they're so snappy and stuff. And they have, you know, they kind of separate themselves from the regular comedians in terms of hanging out, whatever it may be, because once you make some money, the one thing you want to do, you wanna, you know, exist in that space in your own terms. You don't be subjected to this nonsense these guys put you through. So I get it. I get it. I really do. So let's see what happens, what transpires. Eager to see what other people say in the industry. They won't say shit, obviously. But yeah, this woman's doubling down and stuff. So, you know, prayers and healing and force to her. Let's see how it transpired. Like I said, the original account seems a little bit dicey and a little bit vague. Maybe it's on purpose because she doesn't want to get sued. But I don't know. It sounds a little bit insane, the story. But let's see what happens and how it plays out. You never know. You never bloody bloody no